Hi there, and welcome to Grey Muscle Geekery for the week of February 3rd, 2020, episode 39. I'm Dusty Red, and with me as always, I'm Dusty White. And let's get into this month's Geek Battle Cries. <laughs> This month's Geek Battle Cry of thank yous and shoutouts go first to our Patreon supporters Bada, Chad, Chris, Clay, Delaron, Donna, Matt, Redcoat, Ryan, Silver Gautaman, and Travis. If you love our logo as much as we do, be sure to visit the To Improve Your Day page on Facebook to see more of Travis's work. If our intro gets stuck in your head as it does ours, be sure to check out the musician Pepper Coyote on Spotify. Or you could purchase his work directly from his Bandcamp page. Also, be sure to check out our greater family of geekery. If you've enjoyed some of our commissioned art pieces, be sure to check out Quack Quack Honk Designs at www.quackquackhonk.com. For more geek news, be sure to listen in every Thursday at The Geek Awakens Podcast, hosted by Mitch Ladd. If you enjoy 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, be sure to join DM and friend of the show, Pat Rickert every Monday night for our Loaded Dice Adventures on Twitch. If you have the need for plastidipped weapons for a variety of cosplay or live-action role-playing game needs, be sure to check out the Forge of Wrath page on Facebook. And finally, if you have miniatures that need painting and want to be the envy of all your friends, who better than our friends at Night Owl Painting? Be sure to check out the Night Owl Painting page, and that's night with a K, on Facebook. And now, let's go into this week's news. News. So, as we like to celebrate things all geek around here, it's very fitting that we take a moment to take note of a very special event that just happened to one of the largest cosplay events in the world. Donning colorful shirts with a variety of numbers, and even going so far as to put the name of who they're cosplaying as on the back, you know, for convenience sake... Super Bowl 54 has come and gone, with the winner being the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, from the state of Missouri. (laughs) So, uh, Kansas City Chiefs defensive tackle, Derek Nadi, has celebrated each regular season win by covering the adoption fee for one dog at the KC Pet Project, which is a local animal shelter in Kansas City. However, after winning the Super Bowl... He's basically asking, who likes free puppies? And uh, announced he'll cover the adoption costs of all the dogs, and that's just over 100 dogs, that are up for adoption at the shelter in celebration of their victory. Who wants some puppies? (laughs) That's really amazing. I'm glad to see an athlete like that take, take on that. And supposedly he ended up receiving a um, rescue dog when he was in college and absolutely fell in love with it and got that, you know, you you have the the, the rescue bug as well. You rescue an animal and you just got the why shop, rescue, rescue, rescue. And I'm obviously- Adopt, don't shop. Adopt, don't shop. And so it's really good. We know a lot of people too that prefer to adopt and, and go that route with shelters and stuff. And so far is that we even do stuff for conventions and whatnot that to help animal rescues and whatnot. So, you know, good job on uh, on basically taking your platform. Right. And your your winnings. And putting them to some good. Some puppies. Who wants puppies? <laughs> Mark your calendars now so you can be in the room where it happens, or the theater that is. October 15th, 2021, Disney will present the Broadway spectacular musical that millions of fans know as Hamilton. Even better, it will be a recording with all the original Broadway cast in their original roles. It was filmed on stage at the Richard Rogers Theater. It is being promoted as a live capture film. Musical is your thing, Red? Uh, I mean, I like music. <laughs> Musicals. I can't. I, I mean, they're all right. I don't know about you. Well, this kind of harkens back to one of my favorite musicals that I've always loved, which was Into the Woods, which was the original one I fell in love with was the 1985 filming of a live capture Broadway showing of it. You need to push your hipster glasses up a little bit more. (laughs) You're looking at me like, duh, why don't you know this? (laughs) 
I, like you've seen Hamilton, I assume. I have not. You have not seen Hamilton. I have okay. not seen ha- Hamilton. I know the soundtrack very well. Ah, I listen it. to the musical at least once a month, if not more. Got it. I just really like the fact that it took a historical figure like Alexander Hamilton and made it modernized it. modernized it for the masses oh, for sure. and made it about you know culture and persons of color and basically immigrants get the job done and things <laughs> like that i love it it's fantastic it it's upbeat it has a good message in a majority of the songs i just i really like it and I am excited to see this. I will I will definitely be in the theater where it happens. I have a feeling I'll be dragged to the theater when it happens as well. <laughs> um, so I know you kind of poked me off here, and I'm going to beat you to the punch. So your favorite your favorite is the... Into the Woods. Into the Woods. All right. And that, okay, I've not seen that. And I know you're going to end up asking me. What's your favorite? I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, and again, I, I, I owned... Cats on VHS. Oh, boy. Shush. Like, the stage production of Cats and not some bad CGI nonsense. <laughs> Which we Hedgehog. still haven't seen yet. I, and I probably won't see. Like, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog meets Cats. Pass. Um, I, I've i seen Wicked Live Ooh. in Chicago at the Oriental Theater, which in of itself was a crazy experience because... I thought it was just a regular prop, like a decoration, but they had the big effing dragon like over the stage Uh sitting there. And I just was like, oh, neat. That's cool. Oriental theater, dragons. (laughs) Kind of hit. No. And it's moving and staring at me. And I'm like, I'm a poop. So, (laughs) and I don't like pooping. It gets me in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Spoilers. So I, sadly, I've liked a lot of musicals growing up, but I think for, Price wise, I haven't been able to really justify spending the money on seeing a musical live. I think that will recently be different. Um, if I see something I want to go see, I'm gonna kind of go and see it. I loved Avenue Q. I uh, loved. I wanted to see Avenue Q too. Yep, Avenue Q. A little bit racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, a Book of Mormon was funny. I want to see that uh, one too. I loved Wicked when it came out. I love Rent. Rent is another one of my favorites. And again, I was glad that when the movie came out, even though it wasn't like a production, it was starring some of the original. It kept true. Soundtrack, yeah. Original art, uh, <laughs> musical artists. So I'm very excited to see. I, I'm hoping that this trend of something as big as Hamilton gets carried on for some of the other. And it's not a theater. Like Cats, I would have liked to have seen Cats in a th- on a theater stage. Well, like then I, I, I want to see it in a weird. <clears throat> well, they tried to, they tried, and again, as is Cats is weird because it's multi, like little stories. So trying to make it into a big theatrical, like, not theatrical, but like a motion picture production is right. not just, no, sorry. But, that's what made them just look creepy. Like you're saying, they look like from the Thumb Wars, where it's just like the face just <laughs> smashed on there. I'm like, yeah, you're a cat. I believe you're a cat. Sure, you're a cat. Go away. Go away, cat of my nightmares. <laughs> you're like, Taylor Swift, go away. I used to think you were hot. What happened? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, so it's... Shush. I gotta be hip with it. I gotta shake it off. Uh... It's like when she actually got decent, okay? Like, that album was okay. Now, the country music stuff was... Come on. Like, come on. We have tangented. Come on. Back, back on track. Here. All right, back on track. Um, but yeah, uh, did you accidentally learn listening to Hamilton? Did you have that accidental learning moments where you're listening to some of the stuff and they start pointing out significant facts and some timelines and stuff and you start getting the intricacies mm, of... Not so much for me, but that's because I was a heat history, history major. major. So you see that in there. Do you see Disney jumping on oh, the fact that it's accidental learning? I think there's lots of people that learned a lot about our that benefited from accidental learning yeah and create and learned a lot about (laughs) the creation of our nation based on somebody writing it and being factual with it obviously there's some liberties happening but it was very well done i i am impressed with and obviously the rest of the country is with lynn manuel's ability to be 
that good of a lin- linguistic person. He's gonna spit it. He's gonna and spit he's, it. He, I mean, I think I've said it in another episode before when we were talking about him, I think, getting to create something. I don't remember what it was, but he is this nation or he's this timeline's William Shakespeare. Oh, and I said timeline like we're in an. No, I like it. I know. I stick with this timeline. <laughs> we're staying in this timeline. I mean, they kind of made the announcement of Loki coming out soon for Disney Plus, so you know, timelines is very, very fitting. <clears throat> so, Wizards of the Coast has revealed their plans of launching a new game in the future that aims to be a multi-platform sci-fi role-playing game. To do this, they've put together Archetype Entertainment. A studio that will be led by James Olin and Chad Robertson, who are veterans of Bioware. Some games under Olin's belt are Baldur's Gate, Dragon Age, Neverwinter Nights, and both Star Wars Night of the Old Republic and The Old Republic. Uh, big news for me-ish. I loved Neverwinter Nights and Knights of the Old Republic and Baldur's Gate. I played Dragon Age a little bit. But the fact that you got these two together working with Wizards of the Coast, they've got – and they're focusing on RPGs. I'm hoping they could do more like with uh, Number One Nights. Right. Obviously Dragon Age and – like what do you think? Do you, did, like, did you get to play any of those kind of games? Did you get to do with any of that I stuff? watched a lot of Dragon Age. Again, <laughs> not, not played. The gamer, yeah, not, being not the gamer, but I watched a lot of the games being played. I love the storylines and the side quests. And I mean, it's nice to see something like Boulder's Gate or Never Winter's Night. Yeah, uh, Never okay. Winter Nights. Um, oh, I, I, I try to say win- Winter's Night, but that's a Dresden story, so that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But I like when it it is a RPG built into a game. It's somebody's written work, essentially, for a tabletop sure. plot line, storyline, mod, whatever you want to call it, and it gets made into – it is so well written that it get, gets made to be made into a game that can have a thousand, a million people play it. Now, the question is going to be is are the, how are they going to adapt to the modern short attention span that seems to be – the issue with a lot of games. There's there's not as many long, long, long games as there used to be. There, I mean, even the, like, Baldur's Gate was a several hour, you know, several hours. Dragon Age, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Like, those are long type games. How do you, how do you think, do you, do you think they're going to adapt and make a little bit quicker, a little bit more, like, shorter, but I think depth? your best bet in that scenario is you make sure that the world building is on point. To because grab their people, attention and- exactly, people can do the side quests all they want. They can't even, or they're, they're like, "What's a main plot line? I don't know." So as long as your world building is there, and it's for me specifically, I hate grinding. Uh huh. I don't. I don't <clears throat> like games that make you feel like you're super grindy, like WoW or Diablo, where you're doing the same quest over and over. Yeah, repetitive motions. If you can keep that attention span basically entertained, then I think you got a solid game for sure. What do you get when you take a seasoned female comic, a cooking channel star, some mental health talk, and throw a recording mic in front of them? Oh, and you have them talk about their favorite murderer? You get two of the nation's highest earning podcasters. That's right. One of my favorite podcasts, and I've been listening from the beginning, Mm -hmm. My Favorite Murder, co-hosted by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark, join Joe Rogan as Forbes' list of major podcast earners. With over 35 million downloads a month, They've just recently signed a development deal with Stitcher worth $10 million and built a 55,000 person fan club where members pay annually $40 for exclusive episodes and access to presale tickets to live shows. They made an estimated 15 million in 2019, placing them under Rogan's 30 million. Oh man. You know, if we got, if we charged our listeners $40 a month, (laughs) <laughs> or a year, we'd have like 
forty dollars. That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I can, as we say that with our Patreon listeners, thank you very much again. I mean, if you think about it, do the math. Do the math. Twelve times five. Okay. Anyway, um, no, I mean it's awesome. It's it's interesting to see too that Rogan's obviously got backing. He's got his his career being with. Obviously, with the UFC, being a stand-up comedian, right? With um, Fear Factor, so there's a lot of things there that allows him to get. I want to. I don't want to say artificially inflated. I want to be careful here because I'm gonna get a. No, I'm not gonna get a letter from. Joe Rogan. <laughs> I'm not gonna get an angry letter from Rogan. Be like, hey, hey. He's too busy eating his <laughs> liver and bacon. Oh, that meditarian diet. Oh, I feel bad for him too. Did he say something about his poops being fiery? See, this is all revolving back to poops. <laughs> oh, poop is what this is the theme of the show. Is poop. <laughs> But but Rogan, Rogan has the ability to, and I don't want to say artificially inflate, but Rogan has the ability to inflate his numbers because he's able to get big stars onto a show. He could get guys like Jamie Foxx. He could get guys like Mike Tyson. He could get guys that are, and obviously his his viewpoint, depending on who you are, are questionable to some. And definitely, like I guess I like I like listening to Rogan with like he Snopes pushes open. the envelope. He pushes like, but people like that. It certain attracts people. It attracts people. Yeah, certain people sure. either listen to him because they like what his he believes in, or they listen to him to just go. I mean, kind of like our president, just be like, "What's the dipshit saying now?" Whoa, we're getting political today. And really, like, it's a case of that still brings in listeners. Yeah, that still brings in people to go. Okay, what does he have to say? Or oh, okay, I agree with him, or I want to disagree with them. So you have that. But again, you also have star power. Like, you can't deny it compared to my favorite murder. Well, and that's... He's able to bring in these big time names. And I think that's why I have a little bit more, I don't want to say respect, but at least a little bit more credence for uh, them as stars is because... And I was going that way. They both kind of, I mean, Karen Kilgariff is a old school 80s b-list comedian Mm -hmm. she's not known i mean you've got to be in the comedian world to really know who she was she is she's she's a great writer she wrote for the ellen show for a long time but she's just not that big of a name sure georgia hard sark's kind of the same thing she's Mm -hmm. got a unique look about her she goes vintage and just is very like punk rock looking chick who her and her best friend did a bunch of cocktail shows for <laughs> the cooking channel sure again very unique but they just happened to decide that they both liked talking about true crime which as somebody like myself who also likes talking about true crime it's not a topic you usually find yourself talking about so when you find somebody that likes it you're like oh let's like cool, let's get into it, it. Let, let, let's glom onto it and they found a, a niche community i mean they tell themselves at every live show that this is a comedy true crime show right. like how weird of a combination is that and and make and they have the advantage of while they don't have the star power under name they have the star power under experiences they've been on tv they've done writing they've done a stand up and stuff i mean Let's use us as an example here. Right. We have zero stage experience. Well, I mean, you stood on stage in an open mic and told people that you don't heal stupid, bald, drunkenly, you know. Hey, it, people laughed at. It was good. Well, it was funny. Laughed at it or laughed at me. Either or. Yes to both, but it still worked. <laughs> it did its thing. But <clears throat> we're not, you know, terribly versed in stage presence and state, like, being Knowing what production is. Like, even for this show, I had to learn on the fly audio engineering one right. one So having background of how to work a mic, how to talk through to people, how to relate, how to tell stories. I mean, storytelling is an art. Yeah. It isn't just something that you're born with. Like, I can tell stories. You develop it. You hone it out. You figure out where you're going with it. Where's your middle end? Where's your point? What do you get And into? really, the article goes <laughs> on to talk about more so the fact that podcasting is really becoming quite popular and lucrative for lots of yeah, it's becoming lots very popular. Of things. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you've got comedians that are signing on to big deals. You've got uh, Stitcher again. This they signed on to a big deal for uh, My Favorite Murder. <clears throat> they have just kind of blown out of the water some of these other comedians that have decided to again kind of jump on the bandwagon. Sure. 
Um, well, the thing about comedians, though, and we talked about this a little bit before, is a lot of times comedians, Chris D'Elia, um, even Rogan to a degree, uh, Bill Burr, they will use or uh, uh, what's the other one? Our our boy uh, Titus. Titus, Christopher Titus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do that noise. You get it. And just, Go ahead and listen to some of his old stuff. He has this, like, not lisp, but, like, through his teeth, and it just drives me up a wall. But anyway, but you see a lot of those comedians have a tendency of using it almost as a sounding board. They will, ah, pardon the pun, they'll, they'll go free form, they'll go train a thought, and they'll start well, talking. Well, even now and- they're starting <clears throat> to do it so that they're having other comedians on oh for sure i've seen whitney oh. cummings have a bunch yep. of uh, she had Je- jim jeffries on jim jeffries is so good <laughs> uh she it, bert kirshner has tom Sigor- sagara Th- those two will probably have my favorite comedian i'm gonna say this right now <laughs> like yeah i get all the classics and the legends and whatnot like tom Segura and bert kreisner are like i think i like Segura more i think Segura is a better writer He's, he's got a little bit more intelligence to him. He's got more. Well, I mean, I mean the machine can only get you so many laughs. But but, but, but but even Secret Time is really funny, and the way he presents that, I, and I think that's the difference between the two styles. Is Christ, and we're going off topic a little bit. I know. <laughs> Tangent. Kreisner has a tendency of relying on his frat boy party type style and being out there and being wild and stuff, whereas. Um, Segura is a little bit sharper wit and doesn't have a problem just telling the audience to F off or kind of making fun of something <laughs> like very more direct where if you look at the two of them, they're coming out on stage. Kreisner wants to like have a beer at you, like or have a beer with you. Right. And, and Segura's going to throw the beer at you. Like that's, <laughs> that's kind of how they're just, and I love, I love them both, but yeah, Segura's probably one of my favorite, like easily top five comedians right now because he's just so freaking funny i just oh man so yeah when you have when you're comparing the again going back to the joe rogan and, and my favorite murder type stuff rogan's got the as i was saying the enhanced star power because he's able to bring on he's got the clout oh crap jamie fox is on i don't care what rogan has to say at this point i want to listen to i want to listen to tyson i want to listen to fox i want to listen to all these people who are very interesting and rogan himself is interesting but listening to that is no problem but when you got these two people who are for the lack of better words uh, b-list celebrities who come together and know how to play with an audience and know how to play with a topic that is and really honestly some of the following and you hear because they do a format where they do their their regular hey we're talking about two of our favorite murders or whatever crimes, whatever you want to call it. And then they have mini episodes, which people just write in and tell them their stories. And it started as their, you know, everybody's got a hometown murder or a hometown. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. exactly. So they built this whole, whole community around, Hey, tell us your stories. They are very real. They talk about, Karen talks about her money problems before they got to become big. Sure. Um, Georgia talks about her mental issues and going going to therapy and having problems with her mom. Heck, they became bestsellers for a book that they wrote, uh, "Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered," which is their catchphrase. Mm-hmm. But the book is even really well written and you can go through it and pick out things it just relate to because they're just relatable characters rogan i don't think to me anyway rogan doesn't play that relatability to me (coughs) these two definitely do well i mean it could be a gender thing it could be because there's some levels of rogan that is relatable for me and in some aspects like he's obviously got his own which is funny you say that because and i know there's some friends of mine that if you know, they happen to listen, they probably could call back to me saying, I don't like female podcasters. Sure. But here I am, a big fan of two female podcasters, where in most of my other listening, I'm not a fan. There's just something about it sometimes, and I'm sure I probably do some of my own problems, but there- Well, I think you're, I think right out the gate, your biggest problem is you hate preachy. Mm, mm. And I think right out the gate, you hate preachy, and we see it with comedians. And I, now I'm going to sound like a I'm going to sound like a sex pig now. <laughs> oh, let's name all the problems with Dusty. Here we go. 
But I mean, you and you'll see. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I hated Carlin and George Carlin in his later years as a comedian because he um, just used it as a platform. It was just, for he was just getting preachy. He was just getting preachy and crass. It's like okay, we get it. Like I liked the earlier Carlin when he took ideas and observation. And maybe I'm just an observationalist comedian style. Like that's I like observational comedy. I like mm-hmm. hey, isn't it weird when? And then I'll, like Seinfeld even did that. And there's some Seinfeld jokes that are funny. If you if you could separate. The personality of Seinfeld, <laughs> who is just overblown and pompous, but take the jokes and the observational humor. It's kind of funny. It's a lot of the stuff of things that are very similar. One of Carlin's old bits, first bits, was talking about the similarities that we share. One thing that still makes me laugh to this day is when he's talking about when you're walking up the stairs and you think there's one more stair there and there isn't. <laughs> and you feel like you're flying into space where you're like, whoa. And then when you're walking down the stairs and there's... Uh, you think there's one more stair and there isn't, and you stomp so hard that your sh- that your hips ride up into your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> so, but those are observational things that we've done, and that's funny. Whereas, that's the kind of comedy I like, where older Carlin just got into, "Hey, I'm mad at the world," and blah blah blah. So we flipped that on its head, where you'd listen to some female comedians that do get preachy. They get, right. you know what's wrong with the world, men, and this. And it's like, okay, yeah, I know. I hate me too. I get that I'm a white male, and I'm sorry. I can't help it. However, I am your ally. Stop yelling at me. How can I help you? Stop being mad at me. Like I put the seat down. What more do you want from me? So yeah, again though, congratulations to the crew at My Favorite Murder because I've actually listened to an episode or two just kind of fiddling through to see what makes them work. And it's just cool to see that it's got a very – it feels right from their intro song being just an acoustic opening. It's got a very home – and they do a very good job for how many million dollars they make it now? Yeah, And they still keep a very home, very tight-knit community, very – doesn't seem like it goes to their head. Where in contrast with Rogan, he's got his own studio and talks about his own products and, and goes, does the fight show. You know, he makes money. Yeah. You know that Rogan makes money. Right. You couldn't tell that these two make a couple million dollars and it's, it's endearing. Yeah. It's, it keeps you listening. You, you They're humble. To them. They're very humble. And you, it's for easy sure. to relate to. It's hard to relate to a millionaire. Right. Well, you know, we weren't kidding when we said that we we're talking about nostalgia and such, and well, here we are. Unsure if we're excited or dreading the announced release of the infamous dunkable cookie and frosting dipping snack from the 1990s. I mean, you don't just dunk, you dunkaroo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not Australian. <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah, coming this summer, Dunkaroo will be available in stores once again with its most requested and beloved flavor, Vanilla cookies and vanilla frosting with rainbow sprinkles. Go ahead and pull out your denim jackets, frost the tip of your hair. I don't have hair. And dig out those old Tamagotchis. Oh, and don't have a cow, man. I would like to say I I probably maybe had one dungaroo in my childhood. Well, you I'm, were poor. So. Uh, hey, <laughs> I was not. Okay. I'm just not a sweets person. Nah, I fair. don't like a lot of sweet. Stuff even now. You're, you're salty. Uh, nah. Yes. Huh? But you're, you're, no, you like you like also yes. But you like pretzels. You like chips. You like. I would like to type. see the Dunkaroos have the stability or the renewability that uh, the Planters cheese balls and cheese curls. Oh, they did. came back. You were you, I, you. We went shopping not so long ago, and you saw the blue ah. cylinder. It was like, <gasps> is that? Oh no, the wrong ones. Yep, it's the cheese. Balls, not the I love puffs. the cheese balls. Yeah, and they had cheese puffs, right? Well, no, they have cheese curls. Curls, that's right. Which are not as good. If you're going to do cheese curls, you might as well just go with Cheetos. There's just something about Planters cheese balls that tastes different than your average, like... Cheesy balls. <laughs> just your average, like, surplus sam size Costco uh, lasts for six mm. months pub cheese balls. Yeah, but I'll take... I'll take- Peanut butter filled pretzel Pretzels. any day. Any day. <laughs> One of our listeners actually like will not refuse them. You hand <laughs> you him can't. like he's like, you just walk by him and be like, peanut butter pretzel. He's like, no, no, I'm gonna <laughs> Like, you sure? He's like, no, I don't want to <laughs> I'm I'm interested to see what comes from nostalgia food coming back. You can you can do your crystal Pepsis oh, no. and your 
your other like weird stuff. That all sounds Latin Limited for cancer. Limited edition. That's just Latin for cancer. <laughs> Dunkaroos is Latin for cancer. <laughs> But I would like to see, you know, maybe Gushers. Well, no, I guess Gushers are still a thing, right? They're still a thing. And there's actually a funny side story. that We used to do food drafts at work. Oh, that's right. We used to do like, we used to be bored at work and all of us would sit together and be like, all right, let's do um, candy drafts. Like, okay, who gets number one pick, blah, blah, blah. And like, one of our dudes was like, Gushers, number second round pick. We're like, Gushers isn't candy. Yeah, it is. I'll prove it to you. How? It doesn't. No, they sell it in the candy aisle at the stores. They do not. So he bought a box of Gushers and brought them for us because that was his punishment for believing that Gushers <laughs> is candy. I see where he's coming was from. Was he thinking of Warheads, maybe? No, Gushers. Man, God, Warheads didn't have a center to them. Warheads were just... Oh, wait, no. Yeah, Warheads had that, like... Did they have a cream inside or did they have, like, a chalky powder that was even more sour? I don't remember. I think Warheads... Ooh, we're going to get corrected on this one. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Warheads were a candy, like a sour candy... Yeah, it's a, it's like... Square. No. The circle. Yeah. I okay. think... Oh, yeah. I think it was a circle. And then inside, when you broke them open, it was basically citric acid. Yeah. Or malic... A mal- malbic acid, I think is the one that's worse than citric acid. And it's just... Like it burns. It's just, yeah. It's miserable. Yeah. I think I gave one to my mom as a trick once. I was like, hey, I eat this. She's like, okay. And I gave it to her and she was pissed off. Anyway, so yeah, Dunkaroos is supposedly coming back. I mean, maybe we'll see some Gogurts and maybe, uh, you know, other. Well, they redid Tamagotchis recently too. Supposedly they came out. So, I mean, we can always go with the thing that I've seen a bunch of places. The Fitbit or fit and fitness bands are basically slap our version our version of Tamagotchis. But the thing you're keeping alive uh, is yourself. You. So if you could bring something back from the 90s, like unabashedly, happily would wear it again and not get flack for it, what would you bring back? Probably LA lights. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if I could wear tennis shoes that had little blinking lights, I, I don't know why. And you'd be cool and not just like... And not be like, what the... You know, does she got Velcro on those shoes? Like she can't tie her own <laughs> shoes? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I had a pair when I was a kid and I wore the crap out of those. And I think it would just be fun, you know, going through, you're in Planet Fitness and you're getting your run on. Little and blink on. Somebody's just. Some guy falls over from an epileptic <laughs> stroke because he's a seizure. I'm just watching your light. LA lights blah, go. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah. Okay. What about you? <clears throat> I was just thinking about it. I, I, I mean, as for shoes, I actually had British nights. So that was BK Knights. What, what? Um, I mean, at least were the way of the, of the jeans back then. Oh, man. If I was going to read back something from the 90s that would still be cool. Okay. So, so like, we'd be able to do it and not get... Oh, I don't know, man. It's not a hard one. Something I actually have to think about. I didn't... Like, I, I figured I'd put you in a corner in a question. And, <laughs> like, I mean, girls with scrunchies. Scrunchies are actually coming back. They're starting to come back around. But I did like the, the side ponytail with the scrunchie on there. <laughs> uh, Melissa Joan Hart, you still have my heart. So it's Aww. like so. Oh, Melissa jo- oh absolutely. Closer explains it all. Growing up, I only want. I always wanted a Sam. You didn't want an Elvis. Uh, hmm, nobody wants a pool pool, el- pool alligator. alligator. Uh, but I, the, I have a coworker who has a daughter who's about twelve, thirteen, mm-hmm. and. Fashion is cyclical. Oh, no. All the big hoodies, the scrunchies. Wasn't like a multi-skirt tutu thing was kind of a thing for a while, too? I mean, you had your layering thing in the early 90s. I I still do that, in fairness. I guess maybe (laughs) that's my thing I would want. I definitely layer, like, thermal with t-shirt and a hoodie or something, and, like... Late 90s grunge. Oh, I do, yeah. Oh, ooh, the flannel tied around the waist. Because I get cold easily, but like when it's summer and it's like, oh, okay, it's 85 degrees out. I don't need to wear a flannel. Oh, it's like 65 degrees out at night. I need a little flannel to keep me warm because I'm, <laughs> shut up, I'm tiny. I'm like 130 pounds tops. Speaking of Dunkaroos, or maybe I should say kangaroos, come see us at First Squared in two weeks. Oh, it's two weeks from here. Less than that at this point. 
Happy Valentine's Day to us in yes, we need to. Brookfield, Wisconsin. Yeah. Furries in love. That's what we <laughs> <laughs> So we'll be again at First Squared where we'll be doing our first live show opening for the Dragon Show. Are you ready? Uh, no. I have nothing prepared either. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm sure it'll be a great show, and we'll have a special guest with us, and I'm looking forward to it, actually. As ill-prepared as I tend to be, I'm really looking forward to it and having an opportunity to do what we do live. And remember, that's First Squared at the Sheridan Brookfield Hotel, uh, basically valentine's weekend february 13th 14th 15th 15th. and 16th so if you're a furry you want to live in the midwest area that's a cool con to go to and if you live in the area get a day pass like even if you're not a furry and you're in wisconsin go check them out you'll be surprised what you'll learn you'll see a community that is very close and caring and just all about being who you are even if it is a little bit on the animal side And that concludes this week's news. News. And now we get into Adventure Awaits. Adventure Awaits! So what did what what did we do just two days ago, Red? Alright, let's 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 rewind even further back. (laughs) I am a bachelor and I live in my apartment alone. So sometimes I don't want to cook. Or when I do cook, it's going to be quick and easy. So, like, all beef hot dogs and baked beans, fry them together, you make some beanie weenies. Cool? Got it. So that's Wednesday for dinner and Thursday for lunch. And Or is that... No, no. <laughs> yeah, it was Wednesday, Thursday. And then you came over Friday and made your chili. I did. Your chili is amazing. Probably top five chili that I had. Okay. Like, maybe top uh, ooh, top three. You're on that, like, i rotate you out for top three. Okay. I'll rate you, rotate I'll, you out. I'll take the, the compliment. Uh, you're, uh, my ma's really good. Our friend Jill's got phenomenal chili, too. She's, like, constantly one or two, depending on how I'm feeling. Because she's got more of a Tex-Mex style, as you said. So, you made chili. So, at this point, my stomach is now a gurgling cesspool. <laughs> Of beanie weenies and chili. <laughs> this is only important to the story because pooping is apparently dangerous. For, <laughs> for anybody that knows, I like to play darts. I'm not very good at it. My wall could certify that I'm not very good at darts. But we like to play. Especially when we're working on the show here for a gray muzzle. We'll put some music on and you and I will... What do we usually play? We're usually playing cricket where you successfully consistently kick my butt Mm, i beat you often but by just enough when you're on you destroy me (laughs) and i think that's the more frustrating part of it because like we're close game oh i'm a dart or two ahead of you damn that was good but then when you beat me like hard beat me like you triple 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 game over i'm like well that was the quickest game ever all right cool (laughs) but then i'll win the next like nine games but then you'll destroy me on the tent. So yeah, I just I, I hate you. You're inconsistently driving me nuts. So we were happening to play on Saturday afternoonish. Friday night we started playing and we talked about what we wanted to do for Saturday. Because like, hey, we'll play a little bit more darts and maybe we'll go and buy some more darts for me because I need to. The barrels that I have are a little light. Mm-hmm. I want to get a little bit more weight and a nicer, thinner one. Okay, cool. Saturday we wake up. Start talking a little bit about how we want to do this and what do we want to do and kind of, you know, it's Chicago. It's February. It's kind of winter blues-ish. We've right. got some lucky weather lately, but we're starting to get a little stir crazy, right? You know, it's, let's go do something. Let's go to a mall. Let's go walk. Let's go out. Let's go do something. So I'm like, hey, Dick's Sporting Goods apparently sells darts. Spoiler warning, they don't. <laughs> <clears throat> but at the time... Hey, let's uh, let's go buy some darts. Okay, cool. I'm going to go get some barrels. So then I go into the bathroom to poop. <laughs> what happens afterwards? So what went through my head? Please tell me what went through your head. <laughs> I, I'm not even sure. It's been... I'm one of those types of people. So 
obviously as Red kind of has expounded on his side of this, let me kind of backtrack on my own. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so we happen to be with a handful of our, our really good friends in, uh, on New Year's Eve. And someone was making a passing joke, and maybe not so passing, but a passing joke of, let's all get D20s. So, you know, 20-sided dice. Dodecahedra. <laughs> for tattoos to represent gaming. The gaming and the fact that it's 2020. Right. And I kind of sat there and I remember kind of leaning over to Red and going, that's actually a really solid tattoo idea. It's something for both of us believe will always be a part of our our, our lives. We do gaming in one shape or form. We do worry about like, the obviously the fear of tattoos is, it's permanent. Yeah. And like how many people you know is like, I got my significant other on my foot or something. <laughs> And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, crap, I don't date that person anymore. I guess I'm wearing socks for the rest of my life. <laughs> so it kind of just struck me. And I have I have a tattoo. I have a design that I personally designed when I was way younger. And it was gifted to me as a tattoo from my dad when I first moved up here. So it means a lot to me. It's on, you know, the middle of my back. And – by like – Middle of your back, but like closer to your neck. Yeah. It's between uh, your shoulder back. blades. Yeah. So it's, it's something that was a great experience. I really liked doing it. Again, one of my own personal pieces, my art, my own art design. So it's always meant something to me. I knew I wanted to get another one eventually, but I really hadn't stumbled onto something that I could design or felt personal enough. So thinking, on after New Year's Eve, I think maybe, what, two weekends later, yep. we were sitting gaming of all things, mm-hmm. um, doing Monster of the Week, and I happened to have an idea of taking a tattoo I've always wanted to get, which is the Celtic Knotwork Triketra, and combining it with the D20, because when you it's look at it, yeah, it's a triangle. So why not combine the two? So I kind of started sketching it out and got like real exact with it, with a compass and a protractor and everything to make sure I was measuring things and it looked correct. So I was doing that design and again, it just kept coming back to me of this idea, this design. I really like this. The meaning behind it. All that correct. And two of our friends from New Year's Eve um, did happen to stop at some point and get little D20s. And I, we were all like, yeah, that's awesome. So kind of fast forward to Saturday. I step out of the bathroom (laughs) after pooping. I didn't mention earlier pooping is dangerous. (laughs) And step out and go, okay, let's get ready to go. To which you looked at me and go, we're getting tattoos today. I don't know how this escalated. I don't know what, like, I heard the record scratch of, and, like, Morgan Freeman going, like, like, I'm like, hey, I'm going to go get darts. And then Morgan Freeman goes, but little did he know, he was not getting darts today. <laughs> We're getting tattoos. Uh, what? So, uh, one of our friends, one of the listeners of the show, I had talked about previously being like, yeah, this is kind of what she... She was there when we were doing the gaming session. And I was just like, this is kind of what I was thinking about getting. Even though it was, wasn't was a small D20, it was more personalized for me. And You needed it bigger. I, I needed it bigger because of the in- intricacies of the network. And I was just like, I really want to get this. And she was – her having a couple of other tattoos, she was – so down for going so i happened to take a chance while you were in the bathroom i was pooping (laughs) messaged her and said hey what are you up to now i full well know had she been busy had not responded had not been like let's go i probably wouldn't have have been unmarred we we, we would have gotten went and gotten darts so she was down and in fact she clarified my grammar because I said, want to do tattoo. And she clarified. <laughs> the, te- the text message you sent was, want to do tattoo? And she's like, well, I mean, I'm not down to doing some guy named tattoo. <laughs> or giving you a tattoo, but I could be persuaded to get a tattoo. Yes. So I, I, I didn't know of any location. 
I asked her if she had a place she wanted to go. She was like, I don't know anything. So we kind of Googled Jujules this it. place. Do the <laughs> Jujul. <laughs> and it was the one that had the highest rating, 4.8 stars. Close to their home. Close to, close to this person's house and had 816 reviews. So it wasn't like, I have a five-star rating for six people that have rated me. So it looked like a legitimate shop. And we checked out some of the artist's work. And me, you, our, and two of our friends went to the shop. To go. And we and walked what's the, in. What's the shop's name? Uh, Chicago Ink and Tattoo. Or Chicago Ink Tattoo and Piercing. There you go. That's the full name. And it's uh, located in Old Irving Park and off of Milwaukee and Belmont. And mine and Red's tattoo artist went by Claudio. And we basically walked in. We were... Let's wa- establish wa- Let's establish walk-ins. something. Let's establish something, too. Okay. I hate needles. Yeah, you do. Like, I, I can't express this any closer like any more true i hate needles i have to give well i don't have to but i give blood or i'd rather i have a blood test every year for a number of reasons um but i have a blood test every year and it is a traumatizing situation to the point of i have an ex-girlfriend and even you took up the role and got me but i got cookies after the blood <laughs> test was given because i am a little like Sissy boy. I, I am I am a sissy boy. To the fact <laughs> of my sister has even dubbed my topical lidocaine. That's how much I cheat. I apply some of topical lidocaine and wrap it up because you have to let it sit for two hours, body heat activated. It has been nicknamed sissy cream. <laughs> so I I don't like needles. I'm not a fan of needles. I don't know I no. I, I don't have piercings. I don't have anything. <laughs> I am very clean. <laughs> and then I am going to get a tattoo. Oh, crap. Here we go. So you have properly prepped yourself thinking, okay, I don't want to go then want the tattoo and not be able to get it. So you have properly prepped yourself. I absolutely applied the top of the light of cane (laughs) to my sissy cream to my chest and then did the ceiling and everything and had it on. And I figured... Worst case scenario, my chest is a little tingly for an hour or two, whatever, no big deal. So we walk in, and again, we're walk-ins. We don't have an appointment. A lot of tattoo places are, no, you Books. know that, yeah, you know the artist, you're going in, you're getting a three-hour session <clears throat> for an ultimately, like, sleeve or something like that, but we walk in, and... Well, we walk in, and we see, like, a, a group of people sitting down, and what I'm thinking, I'm secretly thinking in my head, yes. We're not getting tattoos. There's a line and everything else. Like, we're all good. And then we find out that that line of people, basically there are four piercings. Yep. They're all piercings. So we walk up to the receptionist. She asks, you know, what are you guys looking for? Receptionist? Well, she was not an artist. She was just No, but she's a cashier. You're making it sound like a four-star hotel. I'm just saying. she. (laughs) Our concierge. She was like, tattoos, madame. (laughs) She was there facili- facilitating there getting people tattoos mm-hmm. and sci- getting the paperwork handed out and everything like that. So she basically asks, like, what are you guys looking for? And I had my sketch. Uh, our other friend who ended up getting a tattoo that day, she had a picture of what she was looking for. So she was customizing her D20 with watercolor. So just like splashes of color and then the the D20 on top of it, which, just for the line work. Which, on a side note, I talked to my mom later about it. Actually, just today I talked to her about it. And my, she was like, is she into paintball or is she an artist? <laughs> and I'm like, she's, she's, very an, much artist. An, artist. she's <laughs> an artist. She's an artist. <laughs> like, okay, I thought she liked paintball. And so she got the paint splats on the D20, which is really good. I'm like, well, you're on to something there, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> so we go in. And again, I have my artwork, so they were just like, yeah, sure. And they quote us quote us the price, mm-hmm. which, again, tattoos are... They're, they're an investment. Yeah, they're they are art that you are putting on your body. I would or not want to be... <laughs> I would not want to cheapen that experience and get somebody that's worth $20 sure, sure, sure. tattooing my body. So we got priced, and I was just like, okay, let's do this. You know, thinking on location-wise, too... You can technically, at some point, lose your tattoo. 
I mean, it'd be catastrophic. But you could, <laughs> Are you talking about me getting like my arm amputated absolutely. at this point? I can't. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm forever marred with. My, anyway, continue. <laughs> So we walk in, we give her the art. She's just like, okay, yeah, the, uh, we can get you today. And even um, my, and well, that's another thing too, is like, I didn't really know what I want. You knew, and you had this planned out for a while that you wanted the Tricatra on the D20. And our friend wanted the D20 with the watercolor. She was really keen. I like, I like the watercolor. I like this idea. This is really cool. I was like, I'm cool with a D20. I'm good with just a D20. I'm fine. And everybody's like, you got to make it personal. You got to do this. You got to do that. I'm like, ah, D20, it's gaming. I'm good. Then in the shower. Getting ready. Getting ready to go to the tattoo place. Because I'm like, well, if I'm getting tattooed, I'm not going to sit here smelling like a goddamn sailor. So (laughs) I'm going to shower up and present myself because I'm, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a surgical procedure. I am being surgically operated upon. (laughs) There's needles involved and a guy that doesn't speak English. Something is happening. (laughs) So he comes out and goes, I want ears and a tail. Look, I'm furry trash. I've already announced it a long time ago. <laughs> I'm sitting in the shower going, how do I personalize a D20? Like, what can I do with it? I could maybe do the Triforce symbol with the three the three gold and so it looks like a Triforce. I'm like, okay, now, like, how do I, tra- like, I'm furry trash. What do furries do? They put ears on the tail and everything. Oh, my God, I need an ear and a tail on these freaking dice. Done. So I have a picture. Our friend has a picture. You go, I want fox ears and a tail. And, the and they and look at me like, Zoro? <laughs> si, Zoro. <laughs> so I go first, and... I'm going to let Red describe the cubicle in which I was getting and, – and his – the our tattoo artist was awesome, amazing, fantastic. I loved him. His name was Claudio. But Claudio's please cool. explain Claudio's art aesthetic to our listeners. So goth would be the be an undertone. <laughs> Skulls. But it's like not cheapened. It is really like his his specialty shadows. You can clearly tell oh, his, sure. his one of his specialty is shadowing and depth. And I've seen some of the stuff they had on his walls where it looked like, like you see the Ford commercials where it's like built Ford tough and the logo like drops into the ground, but the ground looks like it's got that indentation with the logo on it and stuff. Like he tattoos like a logo or whatever word you want, but it looks like it, like it got stamped hard into your arm and like the skin is cracked around it like your stone. It yeah. looks like he makes it look like your skin is stone. So he's good with color and shading, or not color, but with shading and depth and getting that that illusion. Very dark. With and he's very black, black and and skin tone, I guess, black and white. But he's very black ink. I am black ink. I will do this and this. And there's skulls and there's all sorts and there's like <laughs> death metal that was, music. That was what was playing. <laughs> so I'll give our listeners even a little better of a version. If any of our listeners have seen uh, Bird Box, it the Bird Box challenge. challenge, they a lot of the, his art on the wall was very like the Cthulhu esque art, where I mean, it was like death, and, yeah, and, and I don't want to say decay, but like death and demonic skulls and some demonic stuff, upside down crosses. It's just metal, very yeah, metal, very metal, very very metal. So. But Claudio, well, but he he looks at your design and he's like, all right, cool. Like it's got the shadow, the shading, the triketra, and in a way that that, that symbol's got some grit to it. It's right. a cool symbol. It's layered on itself. It's 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 depth. It has meaning. It's depth of character and everything else. And you got your stuff all set up, and I'm sitting here in this room looking around. I'm just fast forward a little bit, but like I'm sitting here, and he's asking, "What do I want?" And I'm looking around at all these deaths and these skulls and everything else. And I'm just like, I want a D20 with fox ears and tail. Ah. Oh, my God. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Red trying to, because, again, I had my my picture and our friend had what she wanted done. And I had nothing. He, he, he knew he wanted a D20, but he needed to kind of come up with an artistic representation of the, ta- the tail and the ears. So I just basically mm. took my drawing and went, 
this. Quick sketch. Like with a purple pink ink pen. I went, he in wants this. Yeah. In the shop, he wants this. And then Claudio when I was done, yep. he he was just like, okay. And made you draw, like stood up, put the D20 on your chest, and then fee- freehanded basically the tail and ears. And he did it with a, like a greenish Sharpie first to get a rough outline. He even, like, angled it. He did a really good job of making sure he angled it with the dice, too. Like, yep. he drew lines outside, got an idea of the perspective and stuff. Did it with a green Sharpie first. Then did it with a um, blue Sharpie. And then I think finished it with a pen. Like, an ink pen to really kind of narrow it in. Cleaned it up. And then just, like, here we go. I did mention I don't like needles, right? <laughs> now, luckily, my sissy cream did its job. I didn't feel it too much. I'm still a wuss about it. There's some areas that stung a little bit because you're, he was like kind of pulling and tugging because the tail is thicker, uh-huh. like a thicker line. So trying to get that edge on there, I'm like, ooh, okay. But yeah, it was. I mean, you watched me get mine and it didn't like really squig you out or anything. No, I didn't, but it doesn't look like a needle. That's the thing. You pull out a syringe, I'm a freak that out. <laughs> you pull out what basically looks like an advanced bedazzler, I'll be okay. <laughs> and I just, I've had a couple of people ask me, like, uh, you know, oh, I like tattoos, but I, I'm just kind of scared to get one. What does it feel like? For me, I've just got a high tolerance for pain. Yeah, you so- work with me on a weekly basis. <laughs> So it really just doesn't I'm I'm not good to ask about what it feels like. It just feel like there's time even on the one that I got, there's ah. places where it was sensitive, but you take a deep breath and by the time you exhale that breath, they've moved on to another spot. I don't have a high tolerance for pain, so I could easily say it feels like a bad sunburn. Yeah. It feels like you get scratched, not deep, because again, you're not penetrating multiple layers of skin. You're more or less surface, and then it feels like a sunburn. It's irritating. It's a little itchy. It's starting to, we're at the, what, scabbing point where it's like, eh, it's a little rocky looking and whatnot. But yeah, it's a sunburn. Like, obviously, we have small pieces, so I'm sure if I decide to get a, I don't know, a big old flame on my arm, then it's going to probably be a little bit different. But I'll do it again. I'm not worried about it. For someone who is just like, oh, I was like, oh, well, I'm dumb. <laughs> oh, well. So that's what our adventure was this week. And again, it was just kind of haphazardous fluke of a, an idea. And yeah, luckily I have people in my life that go, go in for the ride. And I've learned to never poop again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go poop and I'm going to come out and be like, we're getting spiders on our faces. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, adventure apparently awaited, and uh, I have no regrets. I am super happy to have a D20 for my love of gaming, and I got my fox ears and tail because basically I'm furry trash, but I like foxes, and I've always liked the animal and something I relate to, and I have something that is wholly uniquely me. Same. So, and that'll, uh, that'll end this week's adventure. Adventure awaits! And once again, everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of Grey Muzzle Geekery. That concludes this week's show. And as always, remember, folks, that we are all geeks. And to be otherwise may very well mean to live without passion. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Grey Muscle Geekery with Dusty Red and Dusty White. You can support our continued geekery at our Patreon website, patreon.com slash graymuzzlegeekery. Be sure to check back often as we start to add geek cred levels. You can send your questions and comments to us at graymuzzlegeekery at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at graymuzzlegeek. We can be found on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Buzzsprout. And a special thank you to Pepper Coyote for our intro theme. And if you like what you heard, you can find more of his stuff on Spotify, Patreon, or directly from his Bandcamp page.